this yes so recording this draft um this presentation of our draft strategic plan and just to let you know how this will go is um after this evening's discussion we are recording this zoom it will actually be posted and available for public viewing on our website so if you don't want your face out there on youtube or on our website feel free to shut your camera off we won't take offense at all um but after this discussion um, of, uh, of our draft strategic plan this evening, um, the next steps will be um, opening up for public comment. Um, a copy of the draft plan, this video that kind of uh, includes a one over, um, a one over of this uh, draft strategic plan um, will be posted to YouTube available on our website along with the public comment form. We will be taking public comment beginning tomorrow, April 26th through May 6th, so roughly about 10 days. And that comment, uh, those comments will be taken back. Um, we'll do some further refining um, with the goal to present this to our membership at our annual meeting in June. So if anyone has any questions throughout, I think this is really going to be informal and more of a conversation. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand or just ask them outright, or you feel free to use the uh, the chat feature as well. So um, thank you again all so very, very much. And I'll turn it over to Lori. Thank you very much, Erin. Um, one of the things that I want to start off with and say is that this process has um, done a great job of reminding me how multifaceted historic preservation is. Um, that it requires not just a diversity of skills, but also a diversity of viewpoints to see different meaning and different opportunities in a project from different vantage points. Um, so I really thank you all for such active participation. Um, in strategic planning, we often say that the process is as important or more important than the plan because it's what generates the plan and it's really what creates the stewards for the plan. So again, thank you for everything that you've done and everything that you are going to do in the future to make Wales efforts um, to, uh, to make New Bedford an even more vibrant community come to life. So um, I will start and share my screen and go over what we will cover today. And let's see, and I might have to share it twice. Um, so just to begin with a little bit on the, the type of feedback that we are looking for, um, we want to be sure this plan is clear. <laughs> There's a lot in it. Um, and that it resonates. Um, we also welcome any input on the imagery that is supporting the plan, particularly if you have great photos of the people in preservation, the people who make whale go. Um, we would love to include those if there are any opportunities that you see to add to make this even better. Um, we are going to go over the format of the plan and talk a bit about the goals as well as the comprehensive work plan that summarizes all of those goals into one dashboard, if you will. Um, Aaron touched on our next step, so then we'll go right into Q&A after that. Um, and I would just add, let me just switch screens here real quick. Um, if anybody has any questions as we go, um, please uh, feel free to use the chat. Erin's gonna monitor that um, or raise your hand and we will um, we can talk about anything just to make this as clear as we can. Um, let me just hit full screen here real quick and go to two page screen. Um, okay, can everybody see the screen and see the image? See our cover and it's great. Okay. Um, so as we mentioned, this is the plan for the next five years. It is the next chapter in the tale of ordinary people who do extraordinary things. Um, this is, let me just actually switch this really quickly so you can see both pages at once. Let me see here. It's always fun doing this while we are. In... Sometimes it doesn't like full screen mode, but we will work around that. Two page. Okay. If not, 
me one quick second. Hmm. Okay. Uh, just one moment. I'm getting screen sharing has failed. So let me just try this again real, real quickly. Go ahead in. <laughs> Let's see. There we go. I bet this one will work. Okay. Um, you should be able to see, okay, the cover again. Okay. Right. Okay. And so Good. Okay, so we begin the inside of the report with some images of what it took to make Steeple Playhouse come to life, followed by a letter to our reader from Diana Henry and Aaron and Miranda on behalf of the Whale Board of Directors. Um, uh, there was also a land acknowledgement statement that is printed on the bottom of this frontis of the left page. Um, we then move into our table of contents, and the report includes three parts. The first is really some background about the organization, um, the context in which the plan is, is underway today. Um, and then we move into uh, describing the actual process of the plan. Um, and that has included the incredible work, the incredible ideas that you all have brought um, to this process in the form of the challenges and opportunities, as well as your ideas about actual goals and actions. Um, we have worked to synthesize, pardon me, synthesize those into both a set of guiding principles. And then you'll see in the third part, pardon me, the third part of the plan, um, 12 key goals. And so that third part includes the outline of the goals with detail about how to operationalize those goals via a set of actions and then a consolidated work plan and some detail about how we will get there together. Okay, so part one, background and context. Um, this begins with a story or <laughs> so a very short story about whale and its decades beginning in 1962. Uh, reminding people of the mission of the organization and the big whys. We heard the importance of, of knowing and remembering our whys during the, um, the uh, strategic plan retreat. We then move into um, a statement about expanding impact through partnership. Um, and this is one of the overarching themes of the report that we heard of the plan. Um, that it is really important to re-engage the public in Wales' mission and that partnership building takes on many dimensions. And so those are outlined here. Uh, we then move into part two, which covers our many conversations and the synthesis. We talk a little bit about the planning process. We give a summary of themes, of community challenges, of organizational challenges, of new opportunities and even of the hats that were described during the retreat process. And these come together, come together. into, um, uh, first is the set of kind of these guiding principles, if you will, um, which is really a synthesis of, of, you know, thinking what were the big themes that we heard in these conversations that then are gonna inform goals and actions. And so the five that have come to the surface, be a partnership-driven organization, expand preservation know-how and expertise, be data-informed and measure impacts, grow preservationists. Um, I love this one. I, I, you know, we heard about the importance of that it's really up to whale to grow preservationists starting as early as possible in New Bedford and to make preservation something that is engaging and inclusive. Uh, and then finally, tell compelling stories about what whale has set in motion in New Bedford. So moving from these principles, um, we then uh, see the priority areas, and the five buckets, if you will, of major actions that, um, and these are both, I'd say themes and actions, but these were um, kind of the guiding buckets, the, the, the key questions that were asked both during 
um, the interviews, but then also that that um, led kind of the framing of the strategic plan retreat. And so these are presented, these key areas, and then these you'll see are reflected in what follows in the actual goals and um, and actions. And importantly, so I'm just going to briefly touch on on the the five of these. Um, and then we'll we'll see how these relate to the goals that um, that surface and were refined in the retreat. Um, so the first major one, understand the impact of past projects and advanced data management. The second, update project selection criteria. The third, build preservation knowledge and skills, including by supporting workforce development. The fourth, ensure institutional sustainability. And the fifth, advance storytelling, communication, and engagement. Um, so then moving from these, what, what, um, what the incredible work of, of really this process to date has produced is a set of 12, um, what are hopefully very clear goals and, and how they can be operationalized. So here's the list of the 12. Um, and then what we're going to do is look at how um, what follows in the form of a, a matrix, if you will, that relates goals to actions. Um, and importantly, I want to point out a couple of things. One is that there are 12 goals across these five buckets. So you see five different colors of the, the numbers here. But um, it's not a one-to-one. -one. We've got uh, one really big goal relating to the first priority area and the second. Uh, and then the goal, then we start to see more goals, kind of uh, related goals, if you will, under these following areas. Um, uh, we knew that ensure institution, pardon me, institutional sustainability was a big bucket, if you will. And so there are actually five goals that are that fall under that bucket. Um, we might find we might want to actually add a sixth bucket and break that into two. But right now it's it's still under one big, it's an, it's one big, quite big bucket. Um, so let's look at how how the goals um have been um, further refined since we since we last kind of came together. So number one, understand the impact of past projects. Um, and let me first actually explain how how these tables work. Is you'll see the goal stated, and then you'll see whys. So remembering our whys. Hopefully, this will help the plan as it um, as it is utilized over time. Um, to have these why stated here, to always be remembering what it is that led to the creation of this of this goal. And so then what follows, and this is a little bit different than the format we used in the retreat, but um, so we've got the goal up top, and then we've got how do we realize that goal? What do we do? We've got actions in the first column. So each of these are going to be in this case, we've got quite a few seven key actions, and then the seven, the second column um, is the information collected about okay, who might help us realize or undertake that action. And so there were some great ideas about potential partners um, filled out for many of these actions. In the third column, we see um, notes about whales role. This starts to get really important when we think about how to divide and conquer to get this work done. <laughs> um, and whether that is staff, it's particular committees, uh, whether it's anticipating that we might have volunteers or interns, um, the, the feeling that con continuing to really think and to let's call it assign roles is gonna be very important to the, the actual realizing and the completion of these actions. Um, and then finally, in the fourth column, we have metrics or milestones. So these are ideas about how do we know when we've done the work? Um, in some cases, these are qualitative. Um, they're not always numbers based, but we know that for instance, when we um, get to the point that we have a database and there's a fillable form, a template developed, 
um, that that is going to be a key part of having criteria for understanding past projects and for inputting data. So um, I think what I um, would like to do is walk through uh, this first goal, and then we won't walk through every single action of every other goal, but just to give you a little bit more idea about, to kind of give some dimension to this one. So um, what we heard related to understanding the impact of past projects um, you know, we heard it was really important to be able to look back and say, um, you know, what has been both the direct and the indirect impacts of our work um, and how then can that help us understand where we've been successful um, in the way that we've used our time and our money? Um, how can we then further share this information and conversation with our community partners? And importantly, how can we use this information to guide decision-making and processes going forward? So in order for that to happen, we need to develop criteria. We need to, and this is gonna be concurrent with managing data. Um, we need to choose a database software and begin to format that database. We need to pull information from project records and input it into the database. We need to conduct interviews with past project users, with partners, get that information also collected and into the database. Um, we need to coordinate this with any records digitization that wants to take place about past projects. Um, we heard a great idea about potentially partner, partnering with the Whaling Museum as they have invested in scanning equipment and processes for archiving artifacts. They know very well the ins and outs of metadata and setting up databases. So they might be a great partner in that effort. Um, and then further, there's the opportunity to integrate this data into one of Wales' major current projects, the, um, the Places That Matter green print mapping that's under underway in partnership with um, partners for, uh, oh my gosh, I just forgot. Aaron, help me out. Trust for public land. trust for public land. Yeah, oh, thank you. <laughs> yes, um, and so because that GIS foundation is already set, um, that's going to make it a whole lot easier to integrate both this kind of archival information, information that you want to have at the ready, information you might want to look at spatially into the mapping that you're already that you're doing at present. Um, and then finally, the last step in understanding the past project impacts is to analyze the actual findings and then use that to guide new project selection, um, which is which plays out in goal number two. So does anybody have any questions about the format before we just top line the other goals? No. It's a lot, I will say. Um, I'm gonna give that credit back to you guys. <laughs> um, uh, that's also, you know, this is a five-year plan, so do not be intimidated by the fact that it doesn't, nor should it, uh, you should not try to do this all overnight. <laughs> um, so then moving to goal two, which is obviously very related to goal number one, um, uh, we want to update the project selection criteria and um, use that to support the mission to focus on community engagement and to be sure that Whale is working in a way that ensures financial sustainability as it selects projects. And so we heard a lot about, you know, it's, it's both updating the criteria, but it's also really updating the process. So I'm going to I'm going to keep going through the goals, but time permitting, we can come back to any of these. Anyone has any questions on? OK, so oops. so then moving to. Goal number three, so goals three and four um, relate um, just to let me just do this really quickly, just so to remind. So in terms of orange, we're tying orange. And I think what we might need to do is put this as a header at the top of each of these. So once we move to three, this is about building preservation knowledge and skills, including by supporting workforce development. 
Um, and so this, this has been organized, a lot of great ideas here, organized into kind of two major goals. One um, which has the title, Broaden Who is Engaged in Preservation. So you're going to see that this actually starts to touch into engagement, which is, which is part of that fifth bucket. Uh, but the whys here, uh, we heard some really great ideas about, you know, it's important to start preservation preservation education as early as possible um, that, you know, to that you can't just start with historic homeowners, <laughs> that starting with fourth graders is really or second graders in any way possible is really what's important to begin um, to begin to educate about about what preservation is and what it seeks to do. Um, and so let me I just want to um, uh, describe this first action here that we heard essentially this idea about develop a preservation continuum of learning that is specific to New Bedford and the South Coast. Um, we heard other great ideas about, you know, make this neighborhood based, um, talk about preservation through the lens of sustainability and climate change. Um, and then even the idea of expanding well preservation awards to acknowledge a broader range of participants in preservation, including practitioners, property owners, activators, storytellers, and educators. Um, so all of that with the idea of, of broadening, really it's about who sees themselves as a preservationist, but also who is learning to be and to contribute to preservation through the many, many different ways that can play out. Um, and so goal number four is actually um, a bit of drill down on that, that this first action, but about this preservation continuum of learning across educational stages. Uh, we heard specifically that it should encompass both building an architectural history, but also hands-on learning. Um, and there was great discussion about um, not only, you know, beginning from coloring books that Whale has already generated and, and getting those out, you know, keep continuing to use these to developing family oriented treasure hunts, but then really moving into, you know, how do we think about, um, how do we think about educating, connecting with, with, um, with Botech? Um, how do we think about internships? How do we think about working with trade organizations? And then ultimately um, planning and hosting a biennial preservation conference. Um, so that that last action in the, let's call it the last part of the continuum of learning of preservation conference clearly is something that is more, is gonna come farther down the line. Um, and very much with the idea that if over time you've built relationships, not only with the broader preservation, the broader community in New, in New Bedford, but also UMass Dartmouth, Roger Williams, trade organizations, obviously that sets you up very well to have a lot of participants and contributors to a conference that is down the line. Um, and I think the other aspect of this, it's just really important is that um, there are a lot of opportunities for workforce development that do not necessarily set students on a path of pursuing a four-year college degree. And so thinking about how to provide educational opportunities that can serve a great variety of students in the New Bedford area, um, pointing out that preservation often can include uh, careers that can, you know, where you can in fact make a livelihood um, without having, without spending the money and, and, and taking on the student debt that a four-year degree often entails. So that seems to be a really important theme um, that is underlying goal number four and three, let's say. Um, so then moving, moving on to, to, to continue going, um, so then we move into um, revitalizing membership and recruiting more members for committees. Um, the reality is that that whale, like many other nonprofit organizations, um, is still coming out of COVID from a standpoint of just general mem membership participation. 
Um, and so there's work, there's work to be done in this area, but um, we've heard a lot of great ideas about how to reinvigorate um, building upon the partnerships that exist today, but also looking across the community for new partnership opportunities. Um, and so, you know, that means that there are specific um, committees here that are that are going to be asked to do things like have a systematic campaign and setting up goals for increasing a certain number of members a year. Um, but also thinking through and articulating what does membership really get you as a member? What should it get you? What are people interested in? Um, we heard great ideas about, you know, the why of having whale swag, of having the baseball hat or the bag, um, such that um, the whale brand gets out into the community and becomes the vehicle for people to ask questions about what, what is this thing whale that I see on your hat? Um, and then importantly in this, um, uh, at a certain point, it will be necessary to increase staffing to ensure that, um, that a vibrant membership is supported, both that's both the membership campaign, but also just the servicing of members and partners. So we'll talk a little bit more about staffing in a moment here. Um, and then moving to goal six. So again, we're in institutional sustainability. Um, expand and diversify Wales revenue streams and identify other sources of project capital. Um, again, a little bit chicken and egg here, but one of the big whys to enable Wales to add staff. Um, one of the other big whys to increase Wales' ability to bring capital into preservation projects on behalf of its partners. So one of the fascinating things about the many roles that that whale can play is that it doesn't always have to be the direct capital provider. Um, sounds like there's been some very um, strategic thinking about how to shift into being the partner that might help in the creative capital sourcing, the knowing what type of grant can fit what type of project or even knowing across the landscape of other types of grants and loans that are available, for instance, for economic development purposes, that Whale as a key knowledge holder can help its partners uncover some of that and source some of that capital. So um, thinking in terms of this diversifying of revenue streams, again, is important for Whale itself, just for its own you know, for your own resiliency, you know, I think we've seen that coming out of out of a pandemic that, you know, lots of crazy things can happen. Um, but but also really importantly, um, so that whale whale can, can help its partners. Um, and, and really, and, and so what we're really talking about is leverage here. Okay. And moving on. So the seventh under institutional sustainability, the seventh goal, Grow Wales Legacy Fund. Um, it was great conversation about, um, about the concept of an endowment and um, during the retreat. And then what followed was some super helpful follow-up with the finance committee about the fact that um, the idea of an endowment has been um, has been considered uh, in the past and um, at the time it was the the thinking was let's utilize the legacy fund for the moment which will which gives us a bit of a more flexible way of um, of managing that money um, and as we continue to grow the legacy fund, um, once we get to the benchmark of, of let's say, approximately a million dollars, that may be the tipping point when um, it becomes uh, uh, efficient for managing and actually having um, an endowment with the legal requirements that that includes. So right now, the legacy fund concept essentially is functioning as, as an endowment. And importantly, growing that will allow you to build resilience. Um, and so that is a very big um, goal within this strategic plan. Um, 
And uh, so again, there's a number of ways that can, that can, or pardon me, a number of actions that have been outlined to support that. Um, and it can be everything from having just, you know, a goal um, to four direct contributions. We're talking about um, how to further leverage the um, community investment tax credit, but then also even things like contributing a small portion of any developer's fee to the fund. Um, so that um, that is is uh, uh, I'd say all of these goals are important, but that one certainly is important from the standpoint of putting putting financial fuel in the tank. Um, and then related to that, um, uh, goal number eight is strengthening relationships with community funders and expanding utilization of the revolving loan fund. So it's important to remember that um, uh, most recently, the revolving loan fund has been utilized to, to support major projects that Whale has been involved in. Uh, but there is also the possibility to deploy that fund such that you could make loans to other um, property owners, property developers um, on a more granular level. So during the retreat, there was a lot of great conversation about how can Whale really lean into addressing the housing challenges that the community of New Bedford is facing. And so looking at how to pivot that fund such that it could include direct loans um, to homeowners is a great, um, is a great opportunity. Um, there is some financial complexity to this from the standpoint of loan administration, um, but one of the great ideas that also came to light, um, that has come to light during this process and is outlined uh, in the, the fifth action here is that um, there is a chance to explore with partners the ability to utilize that fund and even pair it with other money that um, the city of New Bedford may be administer, pardon me, administering their, their, through their community development block grant program such that they could be the potential loan administrator while Whale works in partnership as a technical partner around preservation. So that is to be explored, um, but uh, there are some great models to look at um, elsewhere in terms of how preservation organizations are being very, um, very creative in getting money out to others who are actually managing preservation projects rather than taking on the management themselves. Um, and then finally, the ninth is a little bit more of a, of a practical goal around institutional sustainability, and that is to update accounting to include project budgets and separate accounts and to track key metrics on a simple dashboard. So that will, um, will also entail migrating to cloud-based version of QuickBooks for nonprofits, um, doing things like establishing individual accounts for projects that may be even at different banks, and then essentially pipelining all of this information into a dashboard um, that then allows that to be very, very easily reviewed um, during, during um, finance committee meetings and board meetings. Um, essentially, this is building on the great work that, um, that has been done. You know, I want to acknowledge Diane's role in managing a lot of information and working under different models of information, of financial information management. Um, and we now have some new tools that hopefully are going to make that process even, you know, even easier, um, enable reporting, and um, and then even even enable some visualization that can often help people process finance, pardon me financial information. So that's the last of the the goals related to institutional sustainability. And then moving into more of the the storytelling, communication, and engagement, we've got three great goals. The first, broaden understanding of Wales' mission, its achievements, and its active slash potential future work. 
Um, so, you know, what I, I think the big theme here is that Whale has done, Whale has invested a lot of energy in the doing of projects over the last few years. Um, but we have also realized that it is really important to, to spend time telling stories, to spend even more time, I would say, telling stories about that work. Um, such that the broader community values all that whale is doing and seeks to be involved. So, um, so this again is going to tie back to, um, you know, building upon the information and in the past projects, you know, and the database that that um, that is intended to be to be kind of brought online. Uh, but then also other ideas that are really more about outreach. Um, so recognizing that New Bedford creatives have incredible storytelling chops. Um, you know, the idea was brought up about, well, let's just invite them to utilize this content we already have, legacy eight track tapes, VCR tapes, historic photography, and let's be partners in that storytelling. Um, and then other ideas, everything from exploring program partnerships with cable TV or just releasing more content on YouTube, um, things that can be done um, with a relatively light load, I would say, when the content already exists, to targeting programming for um, programs like Chronicle or even um, working towards the co-production of a film about whale that lands on PBS. Um, or somewhere else. Um, considering how long Whale has been at work, um, we know that there is a lot, there is a lot to share. So a feature length um, film doesn't seem out of out of the realm of possibility under the right creators. And then finally, goals 11 and 12, um, user-friendly preservation technical resources and knowledge sharing opportunities on the hows of preservation. So we heard some great ideas about uh, creating a, a handbook for homeowners, expanding educational workshops, and then in a parallel fashion, creating a resource guide for small businesses, um, developing a site program, a site visit program to showcase work that's being done, um, working with partners such as Mass Development TDI that already has some of this work underway, um, and um, and then furthering furthering the development of the mapping activity in collaboration with the city, creating an annual map based list of preservation opportunities, really geared towards the development community to say these are the things that we see that are of great need. And um, and that we want to put on your radar screen, and then further that can be done with thing through things such as co-hosting development tours. Again, something that Mass Development already does, um, and the NBEDC, but that Whale can really play a role in when it comes to talking about historic re, um, uh, historic buildings and redevelopment potential. Um, and then finally, the last, um, this idea of engagement and what seems to be coming to light is not just the importance of, of organizing in a way such that you can continue to go out into the community, but particularly thinking now that you have invested in this incredible map infrastructure in the Places That Matter project, but that you can really start to organize engagement at the neighborhood level and really kind of get a read on how it is that whale is active in different neighborhoods, kind of where there are play, where there are opportunities, where there are gaps, um, and how this process can also really help you keep your ear to the ground um, and grow trust um, among and partnership among among the closest stewards of that cultural heritage you know, and historic fabric. Um, so this very much is, is kind of building upon the places that matter mapping, um, but then thinking about what are our parallel or partner organizations that can help us do things like developing new content for walking tours, where we're really hearing firsthand from the people in communities, what it is that is important to them in the built environment, how they relate to it, how they value it. 
um, and um, and and so that you're you're continuing to like add to the stories, and I would even say create other layers of culture and meaning in the process. Um, and then just continuing with some of these um, things that you do, but where there may be opportunities to do even more again with these new tools that you that you have. Um, inviting neighbors in the broader community to share input on project evaluations. Um, so that's that's meaning um, to share input before a project is confirmed. You know, while you are evaluating, pardon me, evaluating, evaluating or considering taking on a project or helping a project find its partner, if you will. Um, and then being much more transparent about this selection criteria. Um, so that people do understand the process and don't just think um, that whale is about making buildings pretty, <laughs> because it obviously goes far beyond that. And then finally, the last two of these, just um, continuing whales plaque program to be sure that all whale touch projects have visible plaques and really activating through um, preservation month, again, at the local neighborhood level. Um, and so we're just going to wrap here with the work plan um, and show you what we have done, which is, I know, which is where you, where if someone goes holy nails, um, <laughs> uh, holy nails, yes. So what's really fun about this is we want to think about this as dynamic, you know, gamify it if you need to. Uh, but basically what this does is it takes these goals, in some cases that we, we may need to get the language even tighter to be sure you can see that they relate to each of those 12 goals, but, um, but it starts to lay out by year what should happen, and then what we've done is we've, and again, this is building upon the great work during the retreat, what we've done is we've um, color-coded further the major projects that are underway. And then for each year, we said, okay, well, what's really a, what's really a key major initiative, a, a linchpin, if you will. And so we've highlighted those in green. Um, and then just below here for, for your orientation, we have put membership goals. So increasing membership by, by 10% or by 20% um, each year. Uh, we have also put goals for increasing the legacy fund. Um, and I also want to point out, we've added, even though this is a five-year plan, we consider Q3 and Q4 of 2024 a bit of bonus time in the respect that some of these things are actually already started um, or expect to be underway. So there's a little bonus time to your five-year strategic plan. Um, and then finally, the last row is, is anticipated staff additions. We do see that there will be the need for additional staff by 2025. Um, so again, this is intended to be dynamic. Um, the dots here represent when we've got a project that has a strong relationship with another. We've tried to show that for like the major cases. Um, and then this plan ends with just a couple of keynotes about roles and resources and how we're going to get there together and who is going to do what, um, and and just noting the major projects that are that are underway as well. This is a little bit more of like um, the baseline, if you will. And then the last part of the plan are some best practices about implementation and all of the people that we would like to acknowledge who have been so so vital in, in bringing this to where it is today. So that is what I have. Does anyone have any questions at this time, comments or concerns? Lori, thank you so much. And um, oh, sorry. <laughs> I have I have a comment. This is very impressive. Um, and I like everything that has been done and is planning to be done. Um, one comment that I just wanted to make is because I haven't been involved in all of it the whole time. So in just coming to the this 
you know, the layout right now and where we start and where we end up. I was thinking one thing we can, we always seem to be one in the realm of whale and preservation. I'm thinking we also need to communicate pride of place. We have to position ourselves in New Bedford. New Bedford is a special place. It's special because of certain reasons. And I think we need to create that context that we're working in and get other people to recognize the the culture, the, the potential, and the history uh, as well. Yeah. Well, so I that. just think we have to talk a little bit more on that total level of way, way, way up there. Yeah. Yeah, of what, that this is really a special community. Place. Yeah. Yeah. Pride right. in place. Great. And then I saw one other thing, <laughs> which, and you did have it in there somewhere, but in the education part, I think um, a lot about hands-on, you know, kind of learning. But I thought also general history learning in the context of places. And it's maybe a little more academic, but it's also a, a context again. Yeah, and, and certainly something that can be co-developed with partners. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Stop sharing, but um, if it, but if anybody needs to reference back to a page, mm -hmm. I'm happy to. And I will say, we know this is a lot. Maybe it doesn't seem as much yeah. to Lori and I because we've been looking at it since it's the retreat. Lot. It's a lot. It's, it's, it's very good. It's amazingly yeah. well done. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I commend you for doing such a, a great consolidation. Yeah. Well, thank you. And yeah. Then. And and we realized, you know, I, I think maybe um, when, so tomorrow we will share the plan. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, it, there it, it's a little tricky in terms of we got a lot, of, we have a lot of information we want to hold, we want to pack in our car, yeah. you know, or yeah. our roller board, but there's only so much <laughs> um, and that we can fit. Um, and so any opportunity you guys see to make this just more clear um, and have stronger language um, and any fluff that's in there that we can get out, uh, have at it. Okay, it's so on your website? website? Sorry. Where, where we review it again? Yeah, it's 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 gonna be it's gonna be available on our website. Um, okay. so we're gonna send oh, out an e yeah we're gonna send out an email communication tomorrow that uh, saying to the public this is our um you know it'll be when you go to our homepage it'll be right there. Um, click uh, so everything will be very easily accessible. So it'll be a copy of the plan, um, a link to view this recording if people want some more context of walk th walking through the plan, and also a link to a Google form for public comment. Um, oh, I will actually nice. say that um, anybody who's, you know, on our board or a partner, part of our retreats, you don't have to use the form. If you feel more comfortable just shooting uh, Lori, Lori and I an email, we encourage you to do that. Uh, the Google form is more like for um, the general public or other people who um, are members, that sort of thing. So we know it's a lot and it may take a little time to sink in. So, you know, reviewing it and like Lori said, any, you know, suggested edits to how we can make it more clear. Um, you know, it makes sense to us because we're in it, but, um, and also it so, so are you, but. It makes yeah. total sense. Could you send it out as a, as a PDF form? Oh, yes. It's, it yeah, it's going to, it's going to be right on, um, um, you know what I'll end up doing just uh, to, for ease, uh, especially for the board and everybody who's been involved thus far with, this evening, I'll send it out um, via email with a PDF attached. Uh, yeah, the PDF yes. will also be linked on our website as well. So I think that'll just be easier for everybody. So you don't have to go digging for it. So it's a really well done job. Yeah. I excellent. commend you both. It seemed, it seemed like Bethlehem that day, but well. <laughs> Lori, that was all, you know, Lori did such an amazing job of oh, taking yeah. all of the, the clumps of post it notes. Clumps, clumps, that's <laughs> the, the clumps. It was just clumps of post it notes. But it was so, help it was really, really, really helpful. And um, it's, uh, 
it, um, I'm, I'm just really, really excited. And just to, you know, echo what Lori said earlier, I think the process has been just as important um, and beneficial as the resulting plan. And I think what I feel, you know, and as we uh, talked through this yesterday and look, um, she set it up in a way that it's very easy for us. It'll be easy for us as an organization to implement this, to look at, okay, what are our goals and what are the actions so we can um, have a better sense of tracking it, reporting progress to the board, to the public, to our membership. It's really, um, she's done Excellent. a really great job. I just want to say, uh, if I can, I second everything everyone else has said and just want to say, having participated in and seen lots of strategic plans for other organizations. I love this one because it's so practically, it's so practical and it's actually going to be able to be followed. <laughs> it's just, it's just amazing. And you've got so many steps, like you say, that are started or have been intended. And now there's a framework for that you can, that a person can see how these things relate to each other, how they take the history of the organization and move it forward. I, I just, I think it's a beautiful job. Yeah, uh, excellent. Yeah. And I think it's, it's a great document for anybody who's interested in what whale is and what whale does. Also, and it's very instructive about how you put your uh, rubber to the road or use whatever, you know, aphorism yeah, you want to do um, in terms of the organization's transparency and establishing in a public way what it wants to be and to whom it wants to be those things. I, I think it's really nice job. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Huge, yeah, huge thanks to Lori, but also I have to thank Jen Smith because Jen is the one who forwarded Lori our request, our RFP when we put this out. So thank you to our friends hey. at the Park Service. Thank you. Yeah. I, I would just say, um, you know, let's um, let's get this to you guys and let you take a read after you're well caffeinated and um, then maybe <laughs> take a walk around the block. And then maybe have a conversation with another partner in New Bedford and say, hey, you know, like we're moving this direction. How does this sound to you? Um, is this something you'd be excited to help, you know, play a role in? Um, and those types of conversations and what you can kind of bring back from them are going to allow us to even further, like clarify the language, get jargon out and just make this thing sing. Um, and then hopefully, I think what we're envisioning by the time of the annual meeting is that we we really tell this story anchored more to visuals. So again, um, if you've got some great photos that we maybe don't know about, please share them because um, we really want to show that this is a, a people-driven endeavor. Definitely. And uh, thank you all. We wouldn't have been here. We couldn't have gotten here or done this without every one of you and uh, Wales Board and our partners. And um, thank you all so very much. So um, look at that. We're ending right at 6.30, unless anyone has any other questions or comments. We know it, I know it's a lot. So um, thank you all again for attending tonight. Um, uh, expect the uh, the draft PDF to be in your mailbox um, sometime tomorrow morning. Lori and I are going to chat first thing. Um, and um, then it'll be public comment period. And um, like we said, any questions or comments, you can email us directly. Uh, don't feel, you don't have to use the Google form. Um, but thank you all again so very much for giving of your time again this evening. And um, we look forward to sharing this with you and getting even more comments and feedback. So thank you all so very much. Have a wonderful rest thank of you. your night. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.